Internet and Melee. This is KCE with 25 and 52 in my parents' house with a ham sandwich. Pretty much my whole life went totally nuts last week. Um, yeah, somewhere between finals and coming home and having to take Lyndon to the emergency vet. <clears throat> yeah. It's been a little crazy, so there wasn't a video last week, but there is one now. Yes. Um, I'm still not actually done with my finals, because, you know, why be finished with the thing? Um, I have two papers to write. I'm working on it. It's hard. I don't know what I'm... I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I do know what I'm doing right now. I'm making a video. Kind of vaguely eating a ham sandwich. Thinking about whether or not Tupac's a nihilist. I don't know. Okay. I ate a ham sandwich. I drank some really gross Diet Mountain Dew because that's all there is in this house. I'm waiting for my cousin to come so he can paint my parents sunroom, I, g I guess. I don't really know what's happening around here. I just, I need to do a thing, and I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't think that Tupac is a nihilist. And I don't know how I'm going to make this make sense, and I don't think I understand this Cornell West book, and I just, like, I think that, uh, uh, this is what paper writing is like. I'm making you feel really good about going to grad school, aren't I? Um, but I think, like, I think there's some interesting similarity between Tupac's Me Against the World and Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid, Mad City. Um, not, like, Me Against the World isn't as much one consistent story as Good Kid, Mad City is, but there's a similar, like, grappling with what do I do given this reality, um, which, I mean, is common among all of them, but there... They're dealing with very similar realities. It's very much like there aren't a lot of options for me, so what am, what am I going to do? How do I make choices? And I think that's interesting, but I don't know how to tie it in with a book and everything is hard. Um, also, this paper is overdue. Shit. Um, so that's... That's that. There's a new Beyonce album. It's great. It's mostly great. I feel like we collectively need to have a conversation. Maybe not we. Maybe I don't need to be part of this conversation. But somebody needs to have a conversation about, like, the use of the phrase, like, beat the pussy up. Um, because that's a little... That's kind of frightening. And while I understand, like, what it's meant to imply, I don't feel good about like, references to beating things up, particularly when people get all, like, making references to Ike Turner, as Jay-Z does on that album. It makes me kind of uncomfortable, and it's really weird in the context of that album because there's so much, like, pro-woman, pro-feminist stuff, and then suddenly, like, non-critical references to domestic violence, and it's like, whoa! What? So, I don't know, and I don't understand, I don't understand what that's about. I don't... I don't get it. I don't, but I, maybe I don't have to. I don't know. That's a thing that I'm thinking about. But, like, while that's a criticism and it's a legitimate criticism and it's a conversation that should be had, the thing about that Beyonce album is, like, even if she's not an ideal feminist, and she's not, and neither am I, and neither is anybody else, hello, we live in reality. But even if she's not an ideal feminist, this is a, this is a step. Right? This is a big step for a lot of people. Um, like, this is a popular musician saying, like, she's not herself saying, but the word feminist is said on her album and it's not negative, so woo! That's exciting. But also, like, I don't know. I don't know what, like, your progression or what anybody else's progression in their feminism has been, but for me, you know, I was a little kid in nowhere, Ohio, right? And I was... I was awkward and I was unpopular and I was fat, as I still am. I am no longer awkward and unpopular. I guess I'm awkward. I'm awkward and popular and fat? Anyway, um, 
but so, like, I was coming into my, well, I guess it starts with, like, you know, I have these, this family full of women who really don't take shit, um, so there's that, right? And then I've got this, like, this country music thing where women are often kind of badasses. Like, I remember listening to Loretta Lynn's The Pill as a child. Um, so that's a, that's a thing. And then I'm, you know, I'm getting older and I'm not getting any less awkward or any less fat. And it's clear to me that I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna be correct. Like, I'm never gonna do girl right. And that's hard to handle. And I've got, like, like, Daria on TV. And I've got Lil' Kim music videos. Um, I guess also, like, Fiona Apple, Alanis Morissette a little bit, but, like, so while none of those people are ideal feminists or, like, even to my current conception of feminism, like, particularly feminist, um, that, that stuff was all really important to me, and I, those steps were necessary, and so I just keep thinking about, you know, how many people are going to hear Flawless and you know, research the Nigerian feminist author whose piece is quoted in the middle of it, um, sampled in the middle of it, and, you know, from there, like, actually learn some stuff. How many, how many girls are going to get somewhere because of that, and get somewhere, um, but how many girls are going to, like, get on the path to a feminism that liberates them through this album? And that's really, like, they might not... Nobody, not everybody's got to be all academic about it. You don't have to... It's not necessary for everyone to constantly beat their head up against this. But if, like, if there is... If something in that album makes girls' lives better, you know, and makes girls w more willing to stand up for themselves, more, like, feel like they're allowed to be whole people, I can't hate that, uh, despite the fact that I already love it. But, like, I don't... I don't know. So that's... Yeah, I <laughs> I have said a bunch of things, and that's what's happening in my world right now. It's snowy. Yep. I love you. Bye.